Hi and welcome to another Freelance Fridge video tutorial. We're continuing to finish up this Scuba Shark character and this video is just purely about exporting for 3D print as well as uh, the issues with sizing uh, volume wise with your character. So the first thing here is I have my character already done. We've already covered how to merge them all into one piece. So he's pretty much ready to go. But in order to make a 3D print file that's not excessively large of a file, I'm going under Decimation Master first. And uh, this allows you to lower the mesh count, lower the number of polys on your figure, so that once you export for 3D print, it's a much smaller file. So. The first thing to know is to just make sure you don't have any extra objects you don't need in your file. And then go to Z plugin, Decimation Master, and pre-process all. Now the challenge with this is it is uh, pretty computer intensive. And so this is going to take a good minute here or so to analyze the mesh, process it. Um, so that we can get ready to uh, decimate the number of polys. So we just have to wait for it to finish up here. Looks like it's going a little faster than I expected. And once it's done computing, I think we'll be ready to actually uh, lower the poly count on this figure. Almost there. All right, once you see that it's not talking about anything else right here, then you know it's done uh, pre-processing. And then under decimation, it's normally set at 20%. Um, I find at least the way that I model that 15% uh, is usually a little bit better. Um, the challenge with this is you would think that like the higher the number, the more percentage of the poly it gets rid of, but it's actually 15% is what the percentage is left once it's said and done. So the lower the number, the more polys it's going to get rid of, if that makes sense. So I've got it set at 15, and I'm just going to hit decimate all. And this step doesn't take quite as long. It should be done just in a moment. All right, and that's it. And if you've done it right, if you zoom in, you might see a little bit of some imperfections on the faces. And that's just because it's lowered the number of polys completely. But since we're um, doing a 3D print that's a very relatively small size, any small, tiny imperfections aren't going to be seen whatsoever. So now that we have this done, we can go ahead and uh, export this for 3D print. So under the same menu here, Z plugin, just go to the 3D print exporter tab. And the first thing you want to do is make sure to click update size ratios. And then one thing to keep in mind when you're exporting at a certain size, you need to remember which axis that you're um, taking your measurement from. So obviously up and down is going to be your Y axis. And then left to right here, that's your X axis. And then front to back, that's the Z axis. And so now that we've hit update size ratios, which is really important to do before you export, um, you'll see that it has certain numbers here. It's kind of specified for the inches of the figure. 
and you don't have to use these numbers whatsoever. We're actually going to go a bit smaller on this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look and see which of these three axes has the smallest number and which has the largest number. So generally speaking, the y-axis tends to be the largest number. It's usually t a taller figure than anything else. It's taller than it is wide. It's taller than it is deep. But on this particular guy, because of his tail, the z-axis from front to back is actually the, the highest number. So for me, when I'm exporting figurines, um, especially if they're going to go into a capsule or a box or some sort of packaging that's a specific size, then I want to make sure that I'm sizing them based on the, the highest number. Because if I, say, have a box size of three inches and I need the figure to be two and a half, if I put two and a half into the Y axis, your Z is still larger than that. So this guy won't fit in that box because the Z axis goes beyond two and a half. So just make sure to size it based on the largest number here. So I'm going to change Z to 2.5 and hit enter. And that's updated the size that it's going to export. So you know it's going to be inches, two and a half. If you want millimeters, you can just click on this button here. And so when I'm ready to go, I can click STL or OBJ and export it. So I'll go ahead and press STL. And then in here, I can go ahead and name that and save it. I've already saved it, so I'm not going to save it again. But it's as simple as that to export a sized file for 3D print. ZBrush has a great feature for that. And then the next thing I want to do after I export it is I want to make sure that that size looks right and everything. And so I use a free program called um, Autodesk Me Mesh Mixer. And you can download that online for free. Um, and so I just hit the import button and import the figure into this program. There's one thing I wanted to cover that's a little unrelated, but um, it is very important. Um, especially when you're putting a figure in a small box or a capsule, uh, you have to keep in mind certain objects of your figure that extend beyond the main bulk of your figure. So your main bulk is your head and your torso, but then you have things that extend beyond the figure, such as this harpoon gun, the arms, the tail, and so I've actually done two versions of this scuba shark. This main larger one is our main character. This one here uh, to the bottom right, I actually extended the tail out longer and made the tail go beyond, like a lot farther back than the original. So the tail isn't as close to the body. It's a little tricky to tell in here, but you can a little bit. So when I exported these, these are both two and a half inches uh, from the z-axis from front to back. But you can see the huge difference because this tail on, on this one to the left extends out further into the back. Um, the two and a half inches has to cover that extension of that tail. And so then all the other features get shrunk down in proportion in volume when you export that out. So this is especially important for vending um, or some small, small toy lines. If you have appendages that are extending out too far, then when you export that for 3D print, you're going to have issues with the figure feeling a lot smaller than some of your other ones. And you can see these two both have the same length from front to back, but this one on the left feels so much smaller than the one on the right. So if you're doing a series of characters, you're going to want to make sure that they both, they all kind of feel the same size and have the same value. So 
that's just something to keep in mind. You probably don't want your appendages going way far out into the distance because then you're going to have this particular type of an issue come up. But that's okay. We're all covered here. I'm going to delete this guy. So we just have our main guy. The other thing I do in Mesh Mixer is I double check to make sure that this guy can stand up on his own. I've tried to kind of keep a center of gravity far enough back that his head doesn't make him tip over. But I want to double check in here in the program and make sure that it works. So I've clicked on analysis, I've selected my object, and I'm going to click on stability here. And you can see what this does is it creates kind of a footprint for your figure. So this red um, trapezoid, that's showing me the footprint of where this figure touches the surface of the ground, the surface of the table. And you can see it's quite large actually. I made sure that the tail touched the ground so that that can also be part of the stability of this figure. And so the footprint's really good on this. The other thing that um, you need to look at is this green ball. This green ball, when it's green, uh, the computer is analyzing the weight and volume of this figure and it's telling you you're good to go. This figure should stand on its own when it's actually a physical object. If this ball was a different color, then you would know that you might have an issue with the figure tilting or tipping over or something like that. So that's a great feature of this free program to test for 3D print um, before you actually get around to 3D printing. So at this point you have your files saved that you need to and you can send those STL or OBJ files off to your 3D printer um, and get your figure prototypes printed up. Thanks for watching and I'll cover a couple more things in one or two more tutorials here. Thanks so much.